Donald and Douglas are both twins from Scotland who were sent to help on Sir Topham Hatt's railway, but only one engine had been expected. The twins meant well, but they did cause confusion. Sir Topham Hatt had given them numbers, Donald 9 and Douglas 10, but he was still wondering about which engine to send back home. There was a spiteful brake fan in the yard who took a strong dislike to Douglas. Things always went wrong whenever he had to take it out. Then his trains were late and he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. Donald, his twin, was angry. You're a muckle nuisance, said Donald one day. It's to leave you behind, I be wantin'. You can't, said the van. I'm essential. Ach, Aria, Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all is said and done. Spade Dougie, would ya? Take that! Ow! Ooh! cried the van. Hold your wish! There's more coming, should you misbehave! The van behaved better after that. And then one day, Donald had an accident. The rails were slippery, and he couldn't stop in time. Donald wasn't hurt, but Sir Topham Hatt was most annoyed. I am disappointed, Donald. I did not expect such... Uh, clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. M said he's here, said Donald. I should think so too. You have upset my arrangements. This is most inconvenient. Now James will have to help with the goods work while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. Sir Topham Hatt was right. James grumbled dreadfully about extra work. Anyone would think, said Douglas, that Donald had his accident at purpose. I hear tell about an engine and some tire wagons. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. He didn't like being reminded of his own accident. Well, 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 said Douglas innocently. Surely, James, it wasn't you. You didn't say. James didn't say. He slouched sulkingly away. James is cross, snickered the spiteful brake fan. We'll try and make him crosser still. Hold back, giggled the freight cars to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edward Station. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, panted James. These freight cars are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas grimly. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the unwilling cars up the hill. But James began to lose steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! Leave it to me, shouted Douglas. The conductor was anxious. Go steady! The van's breaking! But it was too late. The van collapsed into pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Edward was sent to clear the mess. Sir Topham Hatt was on board. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. Douglas was grand, sir, said Edward. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said Sir Topham Hatt dryly. I want to be fair, Douglas, but I don't know. I really don't know. He turned thoughtfully away and was making up his mind about which engine to send away. But that's another story.